Thank you very much. I think it's a great advantage to be late uh, because um, I don't have to go over explaining what open hardware is and, and business models around open hardware and how it is built. Uh, so uh, that has been done. Um, I will be a little bit more technical because I think people here uh, do understand a lot about peer-to-peer -peer, um, and, uh, and uh, open source. Uh, thank you for welcoming me, uh, and I would say thank you all for being here, and thank you for who you are, agents of change, and why don't you give yourselves a round of applause. I think you all, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about open value networks, which is a model uh, that helps open source hardware to become sustainable. Uh, and <coughs> I've been with Sensorica, I'm part of the co-founders. Want to say it low uh, of these open uh, real open source hardware community. So basically, what we do, we build, uh, we design, uh, produce, and distribute um, open source sensors. Just a disclaimer to put up there: Sensorica is a Commons-based peer production network. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer network, and the open value network model is an open. Uh, it's an open source project, basically. So they don't have. Uh, mechanisms of representation, so everything you will hear uh, here uh, will be my opinions uh, about Sensorica and the models and the model and my uh, vision. Also, I would like to acknowledge that this work is a collaborative work, and I'm very grateful to be here and give you my opinions on it, but my heart is with my peers at home who continue the hard work on the model and on the community. Imagine a world in which your work is fairly rewarded in which your creativity and hard work cannot be monopolized by others. And that's the world we want to build. Our goal is to make open source hardware and software sustainable and independent from the classical economy. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, you probably know MakerBot. So they claim to be the big shots in 3D printing. It's a company that was formed in 2009 and was built on an open source hardware project Reprap. The problem now is that the Reprap, uh, the uh, sorry, MakerBot 2, uh, was closed. So the sad story about MakerBot is that they closed further innovation. They did not reward the open hardware community for their work that was done before they came to market, and they undermined in doing that credibility in open source hardware business models. Open source hardware is about building communities, is about sharing knowledge, um, access to resources, innovation, value creation, creation of social value. But we have to admit that open source hardware communities, they are unable yet to, uh, to capture the value they create. So they're unable to reliably produce, distribute, and service when it comes to the use value uh, that they create. So there is a gap here. There's a gap from the idea, from the innovation, to the market, which is filled by the MakerBots of this world, which is filled by classical institutions that come in, they have the capacity to produce, service, and distribute, but they're based on a different set of values, on a different philosophy, and that creates social friction between the open, uh, the open source mode of innovation and the way this value is captured. And that social friction, for me, it's an economic problem, and this is where our work uh, basically concentrates in filling this gap. So th th there's a lot of things that are missing. I'm just I'm going to talk about the tools that we're develop uh, that we're developing to help these open source hardware communities to bridge that gap, um, like resource flow management, process management, feedback mechanisms to help these self-organizing structures evolve. Um, the structures that we have to sort of think about how to put in place. And I'm also going, to also going to talk about interoperability. How is this new business model and these open communities, how do they fit in the world, into the actual existing world? And for that, we need to think about mapping the value we create, be it social value, use value, exchange value, uh, mapping the ecosystem in which uh, we are as well, in order to think about interfacing of these new distinct features within the world. So Sensorica is this, is this community that designs uh, and produces open, uh, open source sensors. Uh, and we're trying basically to build this model uh, in order to bridge uh, this gap. 
So we have a use case of Sensorica, and there's also Guerrilla translators that are trying to use the, the, some of the tools that we develop. So I'm, I'm glad that our tools are starting to be uh, implemented by others in uh, different contexts. So let's start with the tools. You have here uh, a snapshot of um, what we call the value accounting system or the uh, NRP tool that, that we use. We all know that big companies, in order to become successful, they, they, have, uh, they use software to allow them to uh, do demand uh, management, I mean customer relations management, supply management, inventory management, resource management, project management, a lot of management tools in there. Um, uh, and these are called ERPs, Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. So we're taking ERPs and we're changing them into NRPs, which, which means uh, Network Resource Planning System, to allow these decentralized communities, these open source networks, um, to uh, process uh, materials, to process the resources, to structure the processes inside, um, to manage resources, to do project management, um, and all, all these little things that, that you need in order to become successful and to have uh, reliable production distribution and service of your uh, um, use value. So I'm going to take one by one some of these uh, sections. Um, this is the demand page, uh, which shows you that any member of uh, this open value network can create a customer demand and then use this page to plan the work in order to produce the thing and to allow its distribution. This is the supply side. And this is where you see the stigmergy that we're putting into open value networks. So any member of the open value network of this open source community or other type of communities, they can uh, make purchase contributions. Any material that is used in research and development uh, or that is used in our kitchen, for example, can be purchased by any member. And that contribution is logged into the system. Any member can pay the rent or pay any expenses. These are recurrent bills that allows the organization to, uh, to function. Uh, and these two are considered as contributions. Or if you have a bit of money in your pocket, you can actually decide to uh, make a cash contribution and let others delegate, uh, delegate to others the, um, the uh, allocation of, of um, this, uh, this amount. Material contributions, if you have something at home that you don't use, like a drill or a microscope in your basement, uh, you can actually share it uh, within a project or share it with the entire community. That is also, we call that an, a material contribution uh, that you can, you can make within the context of a project or for the entire network. This is a snapshot of our inventory page. Uh, you have a few things, few items on the left side that, uh, that we inventory, but what's important to look at on the right side, uh, we uh, inventory designs, uh, like hardware designs or software designs. Uh, we document ideas, methods, uh, anything physical that, that, we, that we work with, and so on, like prototypes, products. And this is the core of the system. We call that the value accounting system. Okay? This is where we see how individual contributions to projects, they are lumped in or, or brought into what we call value streams. So people have ideas, they set up projects, uh, they create some commons, and then some product might emerge, go to market, but that, all that is a value stream, and you source the development of this project from the entire network and even from, from outside. Um, and so we call that a value stream. So for example here, this is a process to make a prototype, and the output of this process is a prototype, uh, and you have the work section where I log my time, my, my contribution with my skills, and that could be peer reviewed by others, say good quality or you know, not so good. Then you have citations. This is how we bring in other people's design. Uh, and that could also be across the network. So if I like the design uh, done by open source vehicle, for example, and we want to use it in Sensorica, we can actually cite it. And that, that is giving a contribution to that designer within this particular project. Uh, Consumables input, this is everything material that gets consumed in the process, like glue, electrical wires, or anything that we use to make a prototype. Uh, these materials can be bought by anybody, mm -hmm. uh, so can be anybody's contribution. So again, uh, by uh, including that contribution in this particular process, I include that guy's purchase contribution within this process. Then we have usable inputs, uh, which are things that do not get consumed in the process, but they might be used. So they also 
need to be taken into consideration because they require maintenance. And this is like space, uh, tools, and equipment. And again, these things can be part of what we call the pool of shareables of the network if they're purchased with some grants, or they can be uh, put to contribution by other members, and uh, in which case they, they, they retain ownership of, of these um, usable uh, materials. In the end, what we want to do is to create a system that gives a sense of fairness to those who participate in economic activity about the redistribution of value. Okay? So once the thing goes out and is exchanged with the users, we call it the market, uh, anything that comes back, any form of benefit, could be a case of tomatoes, could be bitcoins, or could be uh, whatever the system of exchange is, we want to know how to redistribute this to everybody who contributed uh, to this economic activity. And you also can extract data and create these visuals, like the role system, for example, and tells you who did what. Who spent the money, who spent more time, who contributed to the designs, or who did project facilitation, or who studied the market before this product was, uh, was done, etc. So this is about the infrastructure, and we only saw this, this little core here about the value accounting, which is about resource, events, and agents. Uh, this is sort of a basic ontology that we use, uh, and you have systems that are built on top of that, the value system, roles, and reputation. And we're also uh, working on, on the tools for management of the supply chain, uh, resource management, process management, projects, and customer relations management. So we are building all that into our infrastructure for now. And this is not everything, because in order to become a self-sustainable economic entity, you need much more. You need, for example, feedback mechanisms. Okay? You need these visuals extracted from this data to allow people to know, for example, who's doing what and how well. Okay? I'm talking here about the roles and the reputation systems that allow the structure to self-emerge. Uh, um, so we're talking here about metrics. How do you capture uh, information from the data? Uh, analysis tools, visuals that you produce to give back to every member, uh, the distribution of these visuals, where do they see what's going on, uh, and also uh, all that is to guide action into reliable economic activity. And then we're also working hard on the normative system, governance, and legal framework. How do we fit into the world as, as an open value network, which, which is not a company, it's not a corporation, not a, it's something really, it's, it's a new entity. How do you deal with that? Uh, and interfaces and protocols with the uh, general um, ecosystem. So this is, this is a simple scheme of the value creation within an open value network. You have a bunch of individuals. They form a, an open community. It's an open network. Uh, they come in. They create commons. We all know that from open source projects. And then uh, all of a sudden, there are products that emerge from these commons. And then there is a need for it. So how do you exchange that with the market? So we're creating interface structures that we call exchange firms. That can be a, an empty shell corporation uh, that takes the legal liability of the products. Uh, it's just a tool to interface with the market. But all the, all the capacity for innovation, production, market study, all that is within the network. What's nice about it is that we're building this infrastructure to be fractal, meaning that any open source community, if they use this kind of infrastructure, they're able to exchange values in between them, and you can see a bunch of networks becoming another open value network. So you can consider a network as an open value network, and a network of networks uh, also becomes an open value network. So this is basically our um, model of scaling uh, this kind of um, model, uh, this kind of system. Uh, Sensorica exists as, as an instance of the Open Value Network for four years now, and uh, we've, uh, we are interacting with the civil society, with um, open source networks, with private companies, with government, consortia, and academia. So we are asking the questions, how can we uh, exchange value with these organizations? Uh, here, I'm just going to go fast. I mean, there's a lot of things around that from our experience that we built. There is some documentation. Uh, and if you're really interested in understanding how we fit into the world, you can, you can find me after and we can, we can discuss about it. Uh, we also have to understand that within these uh, open value networks, you need services. If people come in, they don't know how to create value. They don't understand how value is created. You need to facilitate some processes. So services are extremely important to implement within these kind of ecosystems. Uh, in the social space, just some examples rapidly. Uh, you need to do animation. You need to do networking. For projects, you need to do some matchmaking. You need to do... <coughs> 
some process management uh, in, um, in the realm of exchange. You need to do sourcing of resources in order for the project to, uh, to take off. Uh, you need to take care of or think about commercialization and so on. So it's just some samples uh, to tell you that we are working on these problems and we have some, some mileage already done. Interfaces and protocols. I already uh, showed you the exchange with the market that goes through uh, a legal entity that only acts as an interface between the network and the market. And basically, the, the, the most important role here is to assume the legal liability of the product, therefore to shield the network from, from eventual attacks. Uh, we, are also, we also set up a non-for-profit organization <coughs> that plays the role of a custodian, meaning that um, all the physical assets of this organization that belong to the entire network, they're legally owned by uh, this non-for-profit. Uh, <coughs> and then this non-for-profit is bound by what we call a non-dominium agreement with the uh, open value network saying that they're legally ours, but we're managing it according to a charter that you give us. And if you're not happy with our services, we are obliged by law to give it to someone else. Uh, and, and therefore, you can change this custodian uh, if things can go wrong. We're also setting up a charity that allows us to interface with uh, <coughs> private, uh, private companies that would like to donate or, or individuals. This is more for donations. Um, and uh <coughs> um, you allow them to give some tax relief uh, once the donation is done. <coughs> now what you see here is, is, is what we're also setting up is an entire model uh, of open innovation and I would say open source innovation because people talk about open innovation, put open innovation in different sources and it becomes confusing now. So it's a different model of open source innovation. Uh, where you know, this entire thing, this open value network creates social value, use value, and exchange value through partnership uh, between public sector, private, and the people. While we're interfacing with all these uh, entities within our ecosystem, the civil society, open source networks, private companies, and consortia, and academia, and so on. So we're not just thinking about innovation within a network. We're thinking about innovation that is sort of catalyzed within the network, but it draws resources from everywhere, uh, from, from, the, from its own um, environment. And we have to realize the social value that we create in order to get government grants or to interface with academia, for example. We need to realize the use value we create and the exchange value we create from which we get some revenue. So this is something very important. I heard today a presentation talking about public-private partnership. I think we need to move out of that and think in terms of public-private and people partnership. And what Sensorica is trying to do with its um, um, uh, collaboration with academia is opening the door to these academic labs for people to come there, uh, integrated within the projects, within the open value network, so they get access to this uh, to these very expensive uh, resources that are there and under, uh, underutilized. Um, so I think this is an important realization here. I think Mich Michel Bounds is also talking about the same sort of uh, three uh, uh, party partnerships. So uh, we're, uh, we're uh, not perfect. Uh, we're still developing this software. Uh, and we are planning for a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, we've been using it for two years now, uh, but, but a lot of work uh, should, be, uh, should be done. So we invite you all to participate uh, with us in developing it uh, further. Thank you very much.